Okay, so now we're on our second to last property, transforms. Now, I said we wouldn't omit too many things, and so far we've omitted mappings. Well, we also won't be using transforms. But it's not because we're being lazy, it's just that they're used for something almost entirely different. So first up, what are transforms? Well, first up, don't before we even go into what they are, don't forget that they're just one of these nine top level keys. But and you know you can look through this, but I can sum it up for you in a much more expedient uh, manner. Officially, they're just a set of macros to process your template, and so that's that's the official wording. But the plain English version is this: it's just a set of functions that you want to do stuff to your template before launching it. That's really it. And what are these functions? Well, they're just AWS lambdas. And so let's say that you have a template that has the word banana everywhere in it. <laughs> and you would like that to be replaced with apple or some random fruit every single time you launch the template. Well, the flow that you would do is you would write the lambda. So you would write the lambda that parses a JSON template and swaps out the word banana with apple. So you would just pretend like you're writing a function that parses a JSON template to do so. After that, you would make an independent template using the AWS CloudFormation macro resource. So you'd make a template just as if you're making any old CloudFormation template and in it under resources, you would use the CloudFormation macro resource pointing to the lambda. And as soon as you launch that template, the macro then becomes available to any other templates right there in your account in a particular region. And now you could go to the transform section and use the macro. So just an example of seeing that. If we scroll down here to examples, we can see an example of them using a my macro, which is just implying this my macro is a stack that's been launched in the same account and region as this template that's being launched. And so what would happen by putting it in the transform property when this one, when this template is launched, it would correctly go through and transform this template based on whatever this macro does. And so on our very terrible example here, <laughs> if there was the word banana littered throughout this template, well, it would be swapped out with apple or kiwi or whatever list of random fruits that you have. And so and that, that's it, you'd be good to go. That's all transforms are. You write a Lambda, you make a stack with this macro resource in it pointing to the Lambda, you launch it, and then now you can use that macro in other templates. Now, the thing to be, to this, you know, just one thing to keep in mind is you may not want to parse your whole template and change and transform the whole template. But if you use the transform property up top, so like they have in this example, it is going to do it to the whole template. Well, there is an alternative. The alternative is to use the function transform. If you use the function transform, you can isolate where the transform, where the macro, uh, where the lambda, right, is run, you know, and just isolating to a particular portion of your of your template. Now, though you can probably spin up all sorts of ways that this could be used, it's primarily used for two things. The first is the AWS serverless application model. Now, this is an extension of the CloudFormation syntax. For what? Well, it's a way to create serverless-based applications. Instead of having to spin up all the lambdas yourself and you know, not really having a way to organize them, or you, you know, instead of using something like serverless, well, you using SAM here, you can just use a CloudFormation template. And if you add that transform AWS serverless, serverless to that transform section, well, it enables you to use syntax that isn't considered valid in a plain CloudFormation template. And so this is just their kind of their response to serverless and these different frameworks out there. Now, the second thing is for including other templates. Now, this is exactly what you'd think. It, it lets you pull in another template to your current template. And that may sound pretty useful, but honestly, most of the time, uh, you know, if you're working with multiple templates, you know, especially if you're not just playing around, you know, you're going to develop them separately and then parse them, can compile them down into one file before deploy. Or you'll use exports and imports from the outputs part of templates to connect them. And obviously, if you're using any of the other CloudFormation tooling out there, you know, they usually handle including pieces of templates for you. 
Okay, and so if you'd like to know, like more information to the transform property, you know, the different things you can do with it, I'll make sure that the documentation is linked below the video.